Hi guys, today I'm going to do a fairly simple technique, um, but stay tuned because there's more to it than you might think just from looking at the um, thumbnail. And what you're going to need is some black and white clay, I've got all Primo here. This little piece here is rolled onto a number three on my Atlas 150, zero being the thickest setting, and the same for this white Primo that is also rolled onto a number three. Over here I've got a bigger piece of clay, but I'm not going to be using all this, but I like to roll out a big enough sheet to make sure I've got enough. And that has to be rolled out as the same as these two onto a number three. And then I've got another little piece of clay over here just for a backing for down the road. I've rolled that one a little bit thinner onto a number four, but that's just for backing, so that can just go over there. You'll also need, um, well, you might need a flexible blade. I'm going to need a flexible blade because I'm going to be cutting curves. You'll also need a silk screen of your choice. I'm just going to go with this one that I got from Ojoy Creations, this cute little um, turtle. I really like it. So I'm going to be using that. I will list her shop in the description and also in the pinned comment. I usually list all my extra information in both the description and the pinned comment, just in case people don't know where to look in the description, although I do say at the beginning where it is um, in, in the little text bit at the beginning of the video. I've also got this shape that I'm going to be using. I, I also got this from um, Ojoy Creations. I will list I will list her shop as already stated, but you could also get this cutter from Debbie at Aussie Craft Cutters in Australia. So I'll list her shop as well. You'll also need some white acrylic paint and some black acrylic paint, just regular acrylic paint. No, it doesn't have to be anything, anything fancy. And you'll also need some liquid clay, translucent liquid clay. I'm using Kato, but you could use Sculpey, although I would recommend Kato for this technique. Okay, so I've got my two little bits of clay there, my, my black and my white. I'm just going to make sure that the edge is very straight. So I'm just going to cut a little piece away like that so I know it's straight. Pop it back down there. And I'm going to do the same on the black. Just make sure it's straight. I don't need all of this either, so I'm just going to cut a little bit away. And then all you do is get those two pieces and put them together like so. Bit of gentle rub. I'm going to grab some paper and just give it a very quick burnish. I just want to make sure they are stuck together. Like so. So there's that. Then I'm going to get my paint. Try and make a little bit of room on here. And you don't need a great deal. So I'm just going to put a little blob of white here. And even that's going to be too much. And then a little bit of black here. And obviously I need a brush, which I forgot to mention. I'm using this one. I don't know where I got it from. I think I probably got it from um, Michael's. But you just need um, a paintbrush. And I'm using this one because it's shorter and stubbier and I've still got paint in it, I think, from when I used it before. I'm getting it on my fingers, guys. All right, so just a, a fairly stiff brush like this is best. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to get my silk screen and I'm just going to place it on the black and the white clay and kind of center it. So I've got half on the black and half on the white, like so. Oop. You know what I did, I put it the wrong way around. It needs to be sticky side down, so it sticks to the clay. So I'm just gonna try and center this again a little bit. And I hope that's not gonna go in that black clay. Let me just move this out of the way, guys, because I don't want to get paint all over my silk screen. I'm just going to move that over here a little bit so that doesn't happen. All right, so I'll try again. So sticky side down. Try and center it as best as I can. So you've got white on one side, black on the other. 
give that a burnish just to make sure it's stuck down nice and the paint doesn't seep underneath. Just giving that a good rub. Get my brush and I'm going to go, obviously, the white is obviously going to go on the black side. So I'm just going to dab that on like this. Make sure that paint's getting pushed through the pattern. But I'm just going to take it up to where that black and white meet. So there's that line going down just here. So I'm just marking out that little line so I know not to take it any further. And I'm just pushing that paint in. Like so. I'm just being extra cautious, guys. I want to make sure it goes all the way through so and that I don't miss any. So there's that. And then obviously the other side is going to be the black paint because that's going on the white clay. I'm just giving my brush a quick wipe before I do that. All right, so again, take the paint on the brush, load it up pretty good, and just dab over on the other side, like so. Easy. Now I've made a few of these pendants, but I've used different um, shapes of pendant and also different silk screens etc so i will show you those at the end but i am just going to be doing the one pendant on camera today guys because it's the exact same technique regardless of the shape of the pendant and the the pattern that you use and then once you've done that gently lift and you need to get this in water immediately this silk screen you don't want the paint to dry on it so i'm just dropping it in some water and i'm going to wash it off so you must do that immediately um, so I'm going to go and wash that off and that will give this time to completely dry and I'll be back. This is nicely dried so we can go on to the next step. So I'm going to take my cutter, but I'm not going to push it all the way through. I'm just going to leave an impression. So it's not going to get every tiny little bit of it on there, but that's okay. So I'm just going to go about here, make sure I at least get his head fully in. Doesn't matter if I cut off a little bit of the flipper there. And I'm just going to gently push it down without cutting all the way through, just to leave an impression of the shape. And somebody's probably going to ask me why I don't cut the shape out. I've tried it both ways where you completely cut the shape out, but I found it easier to do it this way. And because I'm not very scientific or mathematically inclined, I'm not going to try and articulate it, guys. You can try it by cutting out a whole piece like this if you want to, or the impression, and you'll see what I mean if you cut it out. I'm not even going to attempt to explain why, but there is a, a reason for it. <laughs> All right, okay, so I've got my little shape, and I can see roughly where it's marked out. And obviously it's a curve, so I'm using a curved blade. And the light's shining on it, so I can't actually see that well, but I'm just going to go like so cut through and remove the excess now we've got this curve and you want to take the whole curve not just the curve of the shape like so and bring it over to the other black clay that you rolled out remove the excess bring it over and then you've got that same let me just get rid of this bit here because that's sticking out a bit so you've got that same curve, she says, as she's trying to smooth that bit out. You've got that same curve then to match this curve over here. And you're just going to butt that up against the clay, like so. Now, obviously, there's going to be lines, but these will get burnished nice and smooth. Word of advice when you're burnishing though, don't rub too hard because you'll likely pull the paint off at this point. So I'm not gonna give this a full burnish, but I'm just gently rubbing my finger over the seams just to make sure it's stuck together at this point and the same up here. So I'm not being overly precise at this point, okay? Um, we just need to remove the excess of this. 
and I'm going to go with the bottom curve this time so I'm going to take it and match that curve as best I can like so like so she says and then get rid of the excess like that again I didn't cut all the way but it doesn't really matter a great deal all right so you've got that shape now so you're going to take that same curve that you've made here and you're going to bring it over to the black clay again and you're just going to bring that piece of clay over and match it up to that curve and this just creates a really nice neat border on your pieces now because this is black next to black here I probably don't even need to do to cut this side but I will just because I want to show you um, obviously if you had different colour you would need to make that same cut I'm just going to quickly roll out my clay again guys because I need to just make it make sure it's big enough okay so now we've got one more cut to do I'm just going to get that hair out that I can see and just give this a gentle burnish before I do it just to make sure it's stuck together like that okay so we've got one more cut to do I could just smooth this out actually no I couldn't because I need to cut obviously what am I talking about I need to cut out the shape don't I that I've already marked out so ignore that bit guys I'm talking crack <laughs> make that same cut over this side into a curve now we've got this last curve here let me just bring this over a little bit we've got this last curve over here so you just want to bring it over to the other black clay so you've got that same curve that you can match and that's how you make a really nice neat border <clears throat> like so just going to separate my clay so I don't get the white dirty than it already is. I'm just going to remove this excess now. Don't need all of that. Don't need that. And I'm just going to burnish one last time very gently over those seams just to make sure it's stuck together. Like I say, don't rub too hard over the painted area. Ask me how I know. Because I was like, like this, and then it pulled the paint up. Okay. Just want to make sure it is stuck together before I lift it onto the backing clay. But this is a really nice way of making a border. And I've seen several people do this. So I'm not claiming it as my own technique or anything. Um, Annabelle she being one of them but I've seen other people do it too but I thought I would use it to make this cool black and white pendant so there's that so that's the piece obviously it needs to go on some black backing clay because we need this to be all held together obviously we don't want to just leave it like that all right so I'm going to gently lift this and hope it doesn't fall to pieces and just pop it on my backing clay like so. Let me just clean up a little bit. All right, so now we really need to make sure these lines are smoothed. So I am gonna burnish fairly well now, but I'm not gonna really burnish over this bit. I can do a gentle rub, but not, not a really rough burnish. I'm just going to keep lifting my paper to see how it's going. So there's a little bit here that needs rubbing. And I am just going to use my finger. I'm not going to use my steel soap because it's going to be a little bit too brutal for this, which is just one of these that I use for burnishing normally. I'll just go like this over the top. And you can get those in my Amazon storefront as well. They are ideal for burnishing, but for this, I just want to be a little more gentle. So I'm just using my finger. 
and I'm just periodically checking to see how those seams look and it's getting there. So I'd rather you take your time on this bit than just go like that and ruin it. Again, ask me how I know. <laughs> oh dear. I had one of my derp moments and I just went crazy with the burnish, the burnishing thing and uh, lifted the paper off and the paint came up with it because I rubbed way too hard. So yeah, it does take a little bit more time doing it this way, but better to be safe than sorry. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep doing that. I'm just gonna keep doing that off camera until I've got it nice and All right smooth. guys, I've burnished it so the seams aren't showing, so that's what it looks like. And now all we need to do is just cut away the excess. So you can make your border as wide or as narrow as you'd like. So it's up to you where you cut, but you're just gonna follow that shape around that you already cut out. This bit was a bit awkward for some reason. It didn't want to burnish that well. So I'm not gonna make a massive border. I mean, you could cut it out as big as you wanted like this if you wanted, but I'm just gonna take it about here. So I'm just following that same curve that I originally marked out. Now, because it's black on black, you're not necessarily gonna see here. You're not necessarily gonna see that shape, so you just kind of have to eyeball it, but you roughly know what shape you used. So I'm just gonna try and get it as close to the original shape as possible and just remove. And then a little bit, or I could even just cut there if I wanted to, but that would make it a bit of an odd shape, I think. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a border. And there we go. Now, if you're not happy with the shape, you can always take it down a little bit more. But this one looks pretty good. So that's, so that's that. And that's basically all there is to it other than to bake it. But I am going to apply um, some Kato liquid clay for the surface. So I will show you that as well. So I'm just going to take this off the paper and I'm going to give it a gentle um, texture on the back and also tidy it up because it looks a little bit raggedy just there. And I've also got something on it. Let me just wipe that off, guys. <clears throat> Oops. I think it's just a little bit of paint. So I'm just tidying that up. Right, that's better. So yeah, I'm just gonna give it a bit of a, a texture with this spongy stuff. Just because it looks a little bit neater, doesn't it? But I'm not pressing too hard. I don't, I don't want to obliterate distort anything so just a gentle tap like so I'm going to lift it back over and I am going to dome this so I'm going to grab my domey thing which is just a refill dish for an oil burner I've got these listed in my Amazon I always like to give it a quick wipe before I use it again. There's usually like little bits of something stuck on there from my previous bake. So I'm just gonna do that and then dry it off quickly. And then get my piece and gently pop it on the top like so. Give it a gentle press, oops. A gentle press down. I think it's still wet guys. But you get the idea, a gentle press so it's stuck down all the way around. I'm going to bake this in the oven for an hour and I will be back. This is the out of the oven, but I've made a decision to add a um, <clears throat> hidden bale on the back of it. But that's what it looks like so far. All right, so I'm just going to turn it over and I'm going to use one of these um, steel rods to create the bale. Um, you get a whole different bunch of these in different sizes and I've got them listed in my Amazon. So pick one that's going to accommodate the cord that you're going to put through. I think I'm going to go with, uh, oops, sorry guys, not the camera. At least I only did it one time today. 
I think I'm going to go with this size. So that's up to you which size you want to use. So I've got, um, I don't know where that red came from. So I've just rolled out a little piece of clay like so. I'm just going to give it a, a quick texture like this. And I've also grabbed some black liquid Sculpey. So quick texture, I'm going to cut it into a little strip. like so mm, I think I might make that a little bit thinner actually yeah make it just a little bit thinner like that okay and then you're going to get your little steel rod thing just place it on there like that roll it up I like to roll it probably twice around just to give it a bit of thickness it doesn't have to be exact i'm going to try and pull it down to the edge a little bit and then you're going to decide where you want to position it so i'm going to put it about here but before i do that i'm just going to get some black liquid clay and just put a little drop of it on there <coughs> i'm just going to grab a brush just to Smooth it out a little bit. And then where you've got the join, place that on the on the back of the pendant. I can speak on the back of the pendant like so. And just kind of wiggle the rod out like that. Now what I also like to do to make sure it's stuck on there is grab my needle tool and just give it a gentle press in there just to make sure it's on good and obviously that needs to go back in the oven now so i'll bake this for 30 minutes it doesn't need longer than that for that to cure and then i'll be back for the next step guys so i'm just tidying this up on the inside a little bit make sure and it's stuck on there properly and there we go simple hidden bale all right, so I'm going to go and pop this back in the oven for 30 minutes and I shall return. All right, guys, this has been baked again. The bale's baked and, and cured. Um, I went ahead and put two coats of Kato liquid clay on there. I was going to show you how to do it, but um, when I went to apply the second coat and I was recording, the video cut out halfway through. And I'm, I'm just going to leave you a link to one of my other videos that shows you how to do that. But that's had two coats of the Kato clear liquid clay. So there's that piece with its little hidden bale on the back. It's so adorable, I love that little turtle. So there's that one and I said I'd show you some other pieces that I've done using the exact same technique, just different shapes, different kinds of um, stencils and things. So there's that one and then this one and this is a freehand shape that I did as was this. And I did a hidden bale on this one as well and just pushed a um, choker necklace through. So there's that one. I've been wearing this one, actually. I love it. And then this one. So same shape as this one, slightly bigger. I did the border a little bit bigger on this one and a different kind of, um, I think this was a silk screen that I used. So any kind of silk screen or stencil will work for this. So that's that. And there are all the pieces using that technique. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.